Thank you for tuning into this lesson from Transparent Physics. The focus of today's lesson is an overview of the equations of uniform circular motion. This is a lesson in the uh, moving in circles unit involving objects that travel in a circular path. And we're introducing a new, uh, new term, I guess, in this video, the idea of uniform circular motion. So let's start off with that first because that's gonna color everything else that we're gonna take a look at. There's lots of ways that objects can move in a circular path. Uh, if you remember from the previous video, we are focusing on objects that are move in a curved path. There's lots of ways that can happen, a car on a road, an object tied to a string, uh, a satellite orbiting a, a, a planet, a plane taking a turn. Regardless of that, uh, when the object is traveling on a circular path, its velocity is changing. Velocity, if you remember, includes speed and direction. In uniform circular motion, in introductory physics, we are making an assumption, as we often do in introductory physics to make things easier for us to solve. Uniform circular motion involves the idea that we are talking about a special kind of scenario where an object is moving in a circular path, but we argue that it has a constant speed. So that would mean, say, you put your car on cruise control for 25 miles an hour and you drive in a circle. Your velocity is still changing. That is still acceleration because the direction of the motion is changing. But the speed remains constant. And by keeping the speed constant, we make our life a little easier when we're solving these problems out. So let's take a look. Now, in this unit, there are two types of formulas that we're going to be dealing with. We're going to be dealing with kinematics formulas and we're going to be dealing with the dynamics formulas. Kinematics, generally we learned this earlier in the year, describes motion. It's not explaining how the motion occurs. It's just saying this is what it's going to look like if we're just talking about how an object moves. If we argue that the speed is constant, um, the speed is d equals vt, uh, or VIT, the initial velocity, but if the velocity doesn't change, we can just turn it to V. If we manipulate this equation to solve for V, we divide both sides by T, so we're left with this equation, D equal, or sorry, V equals D over T. All right. Uh, if we're talking about this in the context of a circular path, we could argue that D is the distance uh, that you travel in one loop, we could argue that t is the time it takes to travel one loop. The distance to travel one loop is known as the circumference. You've, I'm sure, heard that before. Uh, a possibly new term for you is this guy right here. Time to complete one loop is known as the period. As you study more physics, the term period is going to reappear in several different places. Um, it's just a way to talk about the amount of time it takes to complete a cycle. There's lots of different cycles, like in school, you have a number of periods throughout the day. Um, so one thing of interest here, and this might be the first time we're talking about that uh, in this uh, series, it makes a difference in physics, whether you are using a lowercase t or an uppercase t. Um, capitalization matters in a lot of ways. So a lot of kids, when they start, they just randomly write capitals for those letters. I, I discourage that. I always ask kids to use lowercase letters, not kids, students, uh, to use lowercase letters uh, unless otherwise specified. And lowercase t and capital T are two different things. Capital T is reserved for the period, which is a very special kind of time, the time it takes to complete one cycle. In this case, a cycle is once around the circle. So that equation is not too bad. Hopefully it makes sense. We have D over T. This is our D. This is our T. Okay. So that's our first equation. Uh, speed is 2 pi R over T. 2 pi R is the circumference. Uh, the next equation we can take a look at uh, involves centripetal acceleration. Now centripetal acceleration uh, is, uh, I think, conceptually a little harder for circular motion when we are talking about a linear acceleration, when we're talking about a change in speed, acceleration is meters per second per second. Uh, 
plus two meters per second per second plus two meters per second squared tells you the rate at which the speed is changing in the context of you know the object speeding up or slowing down so the general definition for acceleration is the rate at which velocity is changing that said if we assume speed is constant which we are arguing because it's uniform circular motion then velocity is speed and direction and if we don't allow the speed to change then the only thing left to change is the direction of the velocity so i consider it and again i'm not saying that you know um, all your teachers and professors necessarily think about it this way but when i think of centripetal acceleration i'm thinking about it in terms of the rate at which the direction of the velocity is changing um, you could sort of think of it as how hard are you taking the turn uh, are you are you turning in a in a gentle turn or are you turning kind of rapidly you could be moving kind of slowly in in the big picture but be taking a turn in a very short radius or you could be moving very very fast uh, but maybe you're way far out in the circle and, and taking a pretty gradual turn. So your speed in and of itself doesn't necessarily tell you like how hard you're taking the turn. Uh, it's really the rate at which your velocity is changing. And when we do the calculation, uh, the argument is that um, it gives us a sense for uh, how much of a centripetal acceleration we're going to be dealing with. Now, if we take a look at these two equations so far, uh, we can see that we have, let's see, can we see? Get used to my frame of, there we go, we'll go out a little bit. All right, so we zoom out a little bit more. So the equations we've talked about so far, V equals two pi r over T. Centripetal acceleration, uh, you know, there, there's different places you can go if you want to see where this equation gets derived from. Uh, for all intents and purposes, we're just going to say, uh, hey, here it is. The centripetal acceleration, I write a little tiny c in there. Give it its little close up here. There we are. So it's ac equals v squared over r. And when we take a look at this equation, uh, the, the formulas have a lot of interesting things going along with them. If we understand the formula, it gives us a sense of what's going on. So this centripetal acceleration is saying, hey, as the speed of the object goes up, it's going to be taking the turn faster, given the same turn. Makes sense. As the radius gets bigger, um, we're going to be taking this turn. Um, it's going to be easier to take the turn. Um, if the value in the denominator gets bigger, then the overall value of the fraction gets smaller. So taking a larger turn is easier to do than taking a smaller turn. Also, one other thing to note is that the speed is squared. So changing your speed has a big impact on how easy or hard it is to take a turn. Um, that's why you don't really want to take a sharp turn at too high of a speed. You want to slow down a little bit or a lot, depending on how fast you're going. And that squared term in there is the reason for that. Speed is very important in factoring in how much centripetal acceleration you have. So we have these two equations to start and there's a, a little bit of extra manipulation we do uh, to actually get a third equation because sometimes we don't necessarily know the, the speed of the object uh, at, at a particular time. And we still wanna talk about the acceleration. So we can do that by combining these two equations together. Uh, we take our centripetal acceleration equation, V squared over R, and we learned earlier in the video that velocity, um, I should, the, the speed really, not the velocity, the speed is equal to two pi r over t. So wherever we see v, we can set it equal to two pi r over t. Now that quantity v is squared, and that all goes over the radius. So if we factor through the square into the fraction, uh, two becomes four, pi becomes pi squared, r becomes r squared, and t becomes t squared. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so we can see that an r squared divided by an r, one of those r's is going to cancel out. So this term goes away, we lose an r from the top, and we're left with this final value here. So it's another way to look at acceleration. Uh, this time we're looking at centripetal acceleration 
in the context of the period, uh, which honestly is sometimes easier to measure. We may not know exactly how fast an object is traveling. If I'm spinning something over my head, I don't necessarily know how fast it's traveling. But if I know the length of the string, and I know the amount of time it takes to complete one circle, I can use those pieces of information to solve for the acceleration as well. So even though this equation is a little more complicated, uh, in the real world, sometimes it's a little easier to find out in an experiment. So that's why this equation still has a role. Neither of these equations are better than the other. It's just different ways to get at the same answer, depending on what information you have available. And that's the kind of stuff you're going to need to parse out when you're working these problems. Take a look at the information you're given, see which information uh, corresponds to, to the equation that you want to use. And, and again, this guy's still handy too, uh, but he's just sort of one variant. Okay, so those are the kinematics equations. The kinematics equations tell us um, an opportunity to how to describe the motion. Wrong way. At this point in the, your physics year, you may sort of uh, know the vocabulary a little bit better now. And where kinematics is a study of the motion in terms of describing how things move, uh, going as a partner with it, although not the same, is the idea of dynamics. Uh, dynamics is the use of forces. Uh, when your class introduced the idea of Newton's laws, it may have been in the context of the word dynamics. Uh, sometimes I like to refer to dynamics as the y-namics because it explains why the motion occurs as it does. Insert laugh track here. All right, so even though we are moving in a circular path, Newton's laws of motion are still valid. Laws of physics don't care whether you're moving straight or moving in a circle, they're still the laws of physics. So we can take advantage of all the stuff we've already known, and Newton's second law of motion is still the second law of motion. F still equals MA. Now we introduced in the concept uh, introduction video the idea of centripetal acceleration and centripetal force so we can rewrite our old friend centripetal force um, FC in the context of Newton's second law so we have it's just this is just F equals MA we throw a little C here to specify that this is centripetal force and this is centripetal acceleration just to clarify what we're solving for but it's still F equals MA at heart Newton's second law is Newton's second law, F equals MA. All right. Now, we can take a look at it in a couple different ways, because at this point, if you remember, we have two different ways to talk about acceleration as well. Now, this is probably, I, again, I don't know what your class looks like, but generally speaking, if, if you're given formulas on your test, this might be the only formula you're given, F equals MA, FC equals MAC. But you can modify it with different loadouts, if you will. Uh, this is great if you know the acceleration right away or if you need to solve for the acceleration, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, maybe you've got one of these other variants. They all measure FC. They all measure the centripetal force, but the information that you plug into them changes. This is again the most straightforward one if you already know the acceleration. Here's our, again, the AC equals v squared over r. So instead of ac, we can put v squared over r. Interchangeable, the exact same things. Instead of ac, we can write 4 pi squared r over t squared. Each of these equations measures the exact same thing. They are all involved in measuring centripetal force or calculating centripetal force. It just works with different information. Do you know the acceleration right off the bat? Maybe you know a speed and a radius. Maybe you know a period and a radius. No matter which of those combinations you have, you can work out the centripetal force. And that's pretty much the overview. Um, we'll have uh, a video where we show you how to use some of these formulas. Uh, if we take a look over here at the rogues gallery for this unit, we've got, again, we've got our three kinematics equations. V is 2 pi r over t. Remember that the capital T is a period. 2 pi r is just the circumference. So this is the circumference over a period. 
one full rotation over the time it takes to complete one full rotation. AC is V squared over R, an indication of how hard you're taking the turn. The faster you're going, the harder you take the turn, the tighter the radius, the harder you take the turn. Tighter radius, smaller radius, smaller denominator means bigger value. And then here we can take a look again, given all things considered equal, if the radius gets larger and the period doesn't change, um, then we're going to require more acceleration because if the radius is, is the same, uh, but the period hasn't changed, that means you're covering a bigger circle in the same amount of time. So you're gonna need to take the turn faster. Um, and on the other hand, again, time is very influential in, in how much acceleration is involved. If this term gets bigger on the bottom, if the period gets bigger, that means it takes longer to complete the circle. So you're not gonna have to turn as hard. You've got, it, you, you got more time to get the circle in. So, and also notice that the T is squared here, so the same kind of thing applies. A change in the amount of time it takes to complete one circle has a big impact on the amount of centripetal acceleration. So kinematics, 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 dynamics. Dynamics here, the idea is that this is just F equals MA. That's all it is. We put a little C here and a little C there just to specify that it's centripetal force and centripetal acceleration. That's all good. So those are the equations for circular motion. Uh, really, while it's nice to get an overview, uh, the best way to learn how to do these is to just get in there and work some problems. So the next video will show us some samples of uniform circular motion problems that you can solve with these formulas. And I look forward to seeing you then and hope that we can make physics a little clearer for you with transparent physics. Oh, and hey, uh, now that you have the equations down, uh, why don't you celebrate with a, a nice cup of tea? <laughs>